Hello, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today, let's talk about barcodes. What is a barcode? You've probably seen hundreds in your normal life, if not thousands. A barcode is a visual representation of data that can be read by a machine. A barcode generally describes the item it is on or the history of that item. They are used in so many industries and for so many applications. Manufacturing, logistics, healthcare, military, grocery, on and on. There are many types as well, more than you may be aware of before clicking on this video. There were certainly more than I expected. Code 39, Code 93, EAN8, EAN13, GS1128, Card Track, UPCA, UPCE, and many more. I think the history of how barcodes came about is pretty important to understand how we got to where we are today. I also just found it pretty interesting when looking into it. In 1948, a man named Bernard Silver, a graduate student at the Drexel Institute of Technology in Philadelphia, overheard the president of a now bankrupt chain of groceries, Food Fair. I think some of them became Woolies eventually, if you've heard of that chain. He heard that president ask the dean of his school about a system to help automatically read product information at checkout. That's a pretty forward-looking president of a grocery chain. I would definitely consider that man a futurist. Anyway, Bernard told his friend Norman Woodland about what he heard, and they started working on this idea together. Their first system used UV ink that faded too easily. They had another system that was kind of like Morse code, but they decided a circular pattern made more sense because it could be read in all directions. They ended up patenting one of their systems, and then eventually it got sold and ended up with a company known as RCA. Woodland went on to work at IBM, and he tried to interest IBM in that idea. They ended up funding some research into this, and they said it was both feasible and interesting, but processing the information that you would get from these barcodes would take equipment that hadn't been developed yet, which was definitely true. They were talking about more advanced computers. Now let's move on to the first example that was actually used in some industry. A man named David Collins worked for the Pennsylvania Railroad, and while there realized there was a need to quickly identify train cars. After graduating from MIT, he worked for GTE Sylvania. You might recognize Sylvania today as a light bulb manufacturer, and he developed the car track system with them. This would be a system to quickly identify railroad cars and it even won a competition against other companies and other approaches, one of which was a RFID system developed by GE. The history of barcodes is so interesting to me because you see so many forward-looking people and technologies that don't win at first, but you eventually see later on. The car track system started being put into place by the Pennsylvania Railroad starting in 1967. So how did car track work? Car track consisted of a plate with 13 horizontal lines. Each of these lines was called a label. There was a unique label for each number between 0 and 9, and there was a label that was considered a start label, and a stop label, and a check label. Now as you can maybe tell from the picture, these labels were either blue, red, some combination of blue and red, or black and white checkered. Now the fact that each plate had 13 labels was significant too. Label 1 was your start label, your first line. Lines 2 through 5 were the equipment owner code, whether the car was privately owned or owned by the railroad company. Lines 6 through 11 were the car number for that train car. Label 12 was the stop label. You have a start and you have a stop. And then line 13 was your check digit label. Uh, a check digit means generally that there's some sort of equation used to determine the check digit. Unfortunately though, the car track system was not successful ultimately. It took too long to roll out and the upkeep was difficult. The car track system did get some interest from other companies though, notably a toll bridge in New Jersey, the US Post Office, and CalCan I believe, or, or CalCon, um, which is now Whiskas, the cat food. David Collins was eager to continue working on his idea, but Sylvania was not interested in furthering development yet. So Collins left and started his own company, Computer Identics Corporation, where the technology was improved and further developed. 
GM had a facility in Flint, Michigan that used the technology to identify transmissions, I believe. So they were one of the early customers of the Computer Identics Corporation. So you can see this concept is beginning to grow. A uh, few people here, a few people there, um, some early test versions of the idea that don't really pan out. It's not until the National Association of Food Chains met in 1966 that this idea really began to grow over the next decade. They met in 1966 because they wanted a more automated food checkout system. RCA, if you remember, they had the Woodland patent, offered to develop a system to test the bullseye design. The Kroger grocery chain offered to test it in some of their stores. The NAFC put bids out to other companies to develop systems as well. The one that really won out was the UPC technology. This began to spread in the mid to late 70s and became ubiquitous over the coming years. Chances are, if you're familiar with a barcode, it's a UPC. In 1982, the US military adopted code 39 for marking all products sold to the military. This really helped hasten the industry adoption of the barcode. So how do you read a UPC barcode? A lot of UPCs are UPC-A. Well, you'll notice some similarities to the car track system. A UPC-A barcode is represented by a series of black and white strips that represent 12 digits. And each digit is represented by two bars and two spaces. The width of each bar and space can vary but you measure their width with modules. So a bar or a space is between one and four modules wide, and each digit is always seven modules. So those two bars and those two spaces, they total seven modules. So every digit in a barcode, a UPC barcode, has the same width. There is also a start and an end module, similar to card track, and then also a middle module, so the total width of a UPCA barcode is 95 modules. And also, depending on whether the digit is to the left or the right of the middle, you create it a different way using the bars and spaces. Here's a more thorough example of how you'd create the different digits in a UPCA. I'm not gonna go into details about each one, but you can tell that there is a rule and that there is a pattern that is always followed. And even whether it's UPCA or car track, there are some universal properties with barcodes. So now you know some of the history as to why we have barcodes, but what are the benefits? Why are they still here? Why are they still expanding? Well, you have better inventory tracking for your supply chain. You know what your things are and where they're at based on barcodes being scanned. You have faster checkout times at stores. Have you ever dealt with a cashier who can't scan your item and they have to key in the price? That takes longer. Imagine if they had to do that for every item you bought. And in addition, at stores, it can be used for member tracking. Do you have a membership card anywhere? There's a good chance there's a barcode on it. It helps hospitals and other medical centers have quick access to patient information if you're wearing a barcoded wristband. It helps packages be sorted on conveyor belts and distribution facilities. A machine can push a package one way or the other based on what the barcode scan tells the machine. In manufacturing, if you have your workers working on a certain task, they can scan a work order or router barcode to log their time spent on that job, which is great for continuous improvement analyzation. It can be used to route cell phones or other devices to websites by scanning something on an advertisement. And of course, there are uses beyond what I've described here. So let's end on the future of barcodes. It's interesting to me that the history of barcodes involves so many people looking to the future. So let's look to our future now. Where will barcodes head? Well, one that we're seeing already is QR codes, quick response codes. These are two-dimensional barcodes. These are those little black and white squares you may have seen. They're better than the traditional one-dimension barcodes, like your UPCA, because they store information in two dimensions, so they can store a lot more information. Having better barcodes will lead to faster tracking of items and more information in our supply chains, which will only make things more efficient. There are people working on invisible barcodes, at least invisible to the human eye, that completely cover a product. That way, when scanning it, it doesn't have to be positioned a certain way. It can go through a scanning tunnel. This will make things even faster. Beyond traditional barcodes, there's something called NFC, near field communication technology, that will allow for more items to be tagged and communicate with computers. 
even when they are not being actively looked at or within a few inches of a scanner. If you lose a plate in your house of the future, you could ask your home computer, where's my plate? And because of the NFC technology in the plate, your house can help you locate it. People are calling this the Internet of Things, and it goes into so many directions I could really do a separate video on this, but that really is a giant step forward in barcode product identification technology. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you now understand why barcodes are so important, you understand some of the history of them, and you can kind of see into the future and see how we will be using barcodes in the future. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I try to do a video about once a month on a variety of engineering or technology topics. Have a great day.